here's how to find love in Southeast Asia or anywhere else in the world. Dream a future first. Start by imagining your perfect life. What does it look like? How much travel is there or is it more stationary? Do you want kids? Do you want a dog? Let me give you an example. I dreamed about a life with a beautiful woman that didn't want or have kids. She would be more interested in seeing the world than nesting in one place. Maybe she would want to spend three to six months of the year nesting, but she would want to see the world the rest of the year. It would not be me making her go. She would want it as much as me. She would be more interested in acquiring experience than things. She would be a minimalist in that sense. She would be more of a worldly woman, a secular humanist rather than into tradition and religion. She might be interested in the historical contrast um, and history of the religions, but uh, wouldn't uh, be for drawn to dogma or to any particular one religion. She might be spiritual, but she would not be the type that promotes a specific religion. She might be spiritually conscious, such as in the Buddhist sense, but understood there were conscious people all over the world without regard to any specific belief. I didn't care what race, nationality, or color skin she had. I greatly preferred that she carry a passport that was welcome all over the world. No visa required in most countries. Then we would wander about on a moment's notice all over the world without applying for visas. Without dreaming of the future, I would never have known when the person I was looking for showed up. Of course, this is describing Chung. I dreamed, dreamed her up before I met her. If I had no dreams, how would I know when they were coming true? Okay, next, cast a wide net. Once you've dreamed up the future, open up all the lanes in the road that allow that dream to flow to you. Don't envision it as you going out to find a person. Envision it like your dreams are going to flow towards you. Some people will say you should only meet people out in public, like markets or bars or whatever. Some people will say you should only date online when you can read about the person before you learn if they are compatible. Some people will only date people they have met through a friend. Others will only meet people at church or other social gatherings. I say that you should be open, open up to all avenues for your dreams to flow to you. Just make sure they are avenues that feel natural. Don't join a church if that doesn't feel natural to you. Just do everything you normally do with casual rather than with focused attention. Just take life easy and view it more like a river that's flowing to you. Open up all the roads like the internet, noticing interesting people in public, friends of friends, social activities you normally pursue, etc. Now, when someone interesting flows into your path, don't start asking about dating or are they single. Just be friendly and curious. Have normal conversations that relate to the context of the moment or flow from the circumstances that brought them into your path. Have normal conversations. When a beautiful woman or person wanders into your life through whatever avenue, just have normal, friendly conversations, not dating conversations. Even if, if it's an internet date, just have normal conversations. Don't start questioning um, whether or not they'll fit into your dream. Don't ask questions related to that. Just be friendly and curious about them in a non-focused way. Ask questions, smile and flirt if you're interested in them. They will reciprocate if they are available and are mutually curious about you. Let me give you some examples of questions that are too focused or personal and then better normal conversation questions. Okay, too, person too personal or focused. Hi, how are you? Do you usually shop in this market? Here's a better normal conversation. Hi, excuse me, I'm new in town. The quality seems good here. Are the prices fair in this market? Okay, too personal or focused. Would you like to meet for lunch tomorrow? Here's a better normal conversation. 
What are some of the fun things people like to do in this town when they're not working? Too personal or focused? You're beautiful. Would you like to go to dinner tonight? Here's a better normal conversation. I am really interested in getting to know the local dishes here. I don't really know what to eat or how to order Filipino food. Is that something you'd be willing to teach me? Too personal. Do you have kids? More normal. Did you grow up in this area? Too focused or personal. Would you like to go to the beach with me tomorrow? More normal conversation. Are you more of a mountain and waterfall person or more of a beach person? If your questions are too focused, they may think you are too needy or pushy or boring and you don't have people in your life and you're trying to cling on to them. Be more playful. Draw out their personality. People love to talk about themselves, but don't treat this like a technique. You should really feel they're a person that you are curious about. If the interest is mutual, they'll warm up and move the conversation forward with you. Keep asking questions. Your goal is to learn something from them about this new place. Their favorite food, their favorite pastime, their favorite restaurant, whatever, related to the context of how you met them. Make multiple requests. If you're sincerely interested after chatting with them for a bit, make multiple requests related to what you learned about them, related to your conversation. Let's say that you like to walk, you learn that they like to walk on the waterfront and people watch. Make a request related to that. Request one, would you like to meet for a walk sometime on the waterfront? Um, if they say yes or no, if they say yes, hey, today or some other time. If they say, oh, some other time would be great, ask them a third question. Can I call or text to arrange another time? If they're interested, this will go well. If not, just thank them for their time and ha tell them to have a nice day and move along. Let's say that you learn that their favorite local dessert is at some coffee shop. Request one, would you like to meet there and show me that dessert sometime? I'm curious about it. Yes, oh, that would be fine. I could meet you at that coffee shop. Request two, how is tomorrow at 3 p.m.? Oh, I can't do tomorrow at 3 p.m., maybe some other time. Or, or Hey, can I call or text to arrange another time? Make multiple requests before giving up. Okay, now live your normal life with this person. Don't wine and dine them. Don't play big man on campus. If you start that, you will attract people that think you are trying to attract them through your money or your status or uh, the fact that you're from another country. So start normal with a pace you can maintain. Have them teach you about local life where dinners are two to three dollars. Go on walks, ride bikes, go to museums, parks, beaches, barbecues, have picnics. Don't go to expensive restaurants and drop a bunch of money trying to impress anyone. A sunset with a local beer or wine or a fun snack is romantic enough. Invite her to your house for dinner after a few uh, meetings or whatever, or maybe the second meeting. Tell her to bring a friend if, if she looks uncomfortable. Make her, um, uh, have her, um, make her your favorite home country dish from your country. Ask her to teach you how to make her favorite local dish. Watch Netflix, live your normal life so you know if they are interested in your normal life. If you play some rich foreign person that can't keep up the spending pace, it's, it's better to find out now. Just be normal, act normal. Don't try to impress anyone. Stay away from the professionals. Don't pay, don't pay for sex. It's not good for your ego or your health. There's no real connection in transactional sex. But if you can find a beautiful woman or a woman that's interested in, in you and that you're interested in her, that's looking for sincere love, that's a better way to live your life than trying to pay for sex. Let things happen naturally. Don't put things on a timetable. There's no set time for things to develop naturally. If they're pushing too hard, then your needs are not aligned. If you're pushing too hard, then it may not be a good fit. People don't walk away from natural, mutually satisfying relationships because they are moving along too fast or too slow. So just relax and enjoy the natural flow of the relationship. 
If it's going to blow up, that'll happen naturally, too, if too much force is applied by anyone. If you are meant to be, it will be. Okay, that's how to find love in Southeast Asia or anywhere in the world. If you'd like to learn how I've traveled all over the world for the last 13 years, feel free to grab a copy of my ebook, How to Fire Your Boss and Travel the World. If you'd like to read uh, the, this in writing, How to Find Love in Southeast Asia, just click the link in the notes that says more information below this YouTube video. Or come check out our travel uh, retired cheap in paradise reports. Thanks for listening. This is Dan of Vagabond Buddha. Have a great day.